Well, yes, we are here once again. It's Bob Lorenz and David Cohn with you right now. And we're not going to talk about, David, you as a major leaguer, because a lot of us as baseball fans and having played the game, we've never stood on a major league mound and been in those pressure situations. But I want to talk about something that relates to all of us as baseball fans and players once upon a time. We all played Little League, right? We all have those memories of a Saturday afternoon and you, you have a one o'clock game and suddenly – you're hanging out after your game. You spend all day at the ballpark. And I just wanted to get your feel for some of those good memories that you have from your early days in Little League. So many memories. It's a great question, Bob. I know you were a pitcher, too, the lefty. Yeah, I can see you with your coffee cup there going lefty. So we, we kind of think alike, two pitchers. Yeah. You know, and I'm a lefty at heart, really, even though I threw right-handed. But, you know, I just remember the family uh, atmosphere at Little League games with my mom keeping the scorebook yelling at me in the stands from the stands to throw strikes, throw strikes, David, get the ball over. And yeah. She hated long games, unmanageable games. And, of course, like any mother would, it was keeping the scorebook. Dad was coaching. Right. Dad tried to be patient with you, but he was very intense. He yeah. was an intense coach. And, you know, I remember being – I remember one game, Bob, it was a Little League championship game. And I threw a wild pitch, and the winning run scored. Oh, and I remember doing a Trevor Bauer. I picked up the ball and threw it over the center field wall. Oh, it was an epic peg for, <laughs> for a 10-year-old. And, and I remember storming off the field and throwing a temper tantrum and my dad kind of getting me off to the side and having a long talk with me about how you come off and how people perceive you, the way you yeah. act, and throwing temper tantrums and not shaking hands with the opponents or the opponent's coach, who was a personal friend of the family. The opponents, right. the opponents were playing his head, the head coach – was a family friend and I wouldn't even shake his hand after the game. So complete idiot, complete uh, hothead, just blew my top. And I, I'll never forget my dad sitting me down for an hour after there. Wow. Three sat me down and explained to me, you know, how to be a good loser, how to lose properly, how to have respect for the game, how to have respect for your opponents. And uh, that's a lesson that I never forgot. Even that was when I was 10 years old. All yeah. these years later, I still remember it vividly. Yeah, almost a shock to your system because had you never done that, you, your dad never would have maybe had that speech with you. So probably really shifted your gears right then, right? It really had a profound impact on me because I was embarrassed after I realized what I had done. And, you know, once you calm down as a 10-year-old and you realize, you know, wow, you, you, know, you know, everybody's looking at you like, you know, like you're, you're a crazy little person. And, and yeah. my dad did a great job of letting me calm down first. And then taking the time to explain to me about, yeah. you know, life in general. It was a life talk. It was a in-the-moment talk. It was why you can't act like that. It's about the future. You want to keep playing this game. You want, you want to uh, – how you come off, how you look to yeah. your opponents, to your fans, to your family, to your teammates. You know, really just, uh, just the way he explained it to me. And, yeah. and allowed me to calm down first. <laughs> you know, yeah, with kids, sometimes when you throw in a temper tantrum, I mean, you know, they, no matter what you say, it's not going to work unless you take your time and have some patience. And, and uh, Eddie Cohn, Eddie Cohn did a good yeah. job with his son. He got with, with Joan glaring over his shoulder at you, probably. No, Joan was right there with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you do remember those things. Like, I remember one game when I was in, I would have been 11 years old at this time, playing Bronco ball was what we called it. And I just, I was, when I didn't pitch as a lefty, I played first base. I could play outfield, but usually it was first base. I just got a new first baseman bit. So, you know, you always try and break it in with whatever it was, the Vaseline or the glove oil, and you sleep on it and sit on it with the baseball inside. But again, it was a new first baseman's bit. I remember a pop-up to me, I went to get it, and because the leather was still so new and the, the you know, the closure, that it popped out of my mitt. And you, I remember the audible gasp from the crowd, like, ah! But I dove and I caught the ball. Recovered. Yeah, it was about three or four feet away from me. And it was one of those, like, you better catch this, you idiot. <laughs> and see, that's one of those things that still stands out to me. Not like a great moment, like, hey, I remember that game I struck out 10 guys. It was the ball pops out of my mitt. It's a brand new mitt. So what I did was I went back. It's the first ever mitt my parents ever bought me. And it was a first baseman's mitt. And I, I had it in my bag, and I'm like, I'm not playing with that glove again the rest of the game. So I got my old mitt. What is this? It's an old cowhide pro model nylon stitched. Crazy. It's just like a little pillow. Wow. That, that was my first mitt. I went back to that mitt playing first base for a while. That's fantastic. What a story. Yeah. You, no, you're so right. 
you remember those frantic moments more than yeah. you do your great games. I mean, that, all the way through my whole career, not only Little League, but through the, through the professional Major League Baseball ranks, I still remember, you know, ball four to Doug Strange, you know, <laughs> like you're walking in the tying run or, you know, the, the, the most uh, anxious moments, you definitely remember more. It's funny, you mentioned some of those in your book that you did with, with Jack Curry, and there were times I was reading the book, and I'm like, geez, David, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> you know, but, but again, that kind of def defines you and helps shape you. I, I think back to those great little moments, like I talked about, once your game was over, maybe your parents had something else to do, you just run around the ballpark, or around the, the Little League facility all, the whole day, and they pick you up at, you know, nine o'clock at night or something. But how about one of those first moments, David? I remember when I made the elevation from when you played in jeans. Now everybody wears a uniform, even the little kids. But, like, jeans and a T-shirt with a cap to that first time you got a uniform, a full uni. Like, how exciting it was, right? You had to learn how to put on the sanitaries and the stirrups. I, that stands out to me, too. It's a big deal. You know, I can't. We, you and I, we not only do we think alike, I think we have some of this, the same shared experiences growing up because yeah. I vividly remember that too from the jeans and the tennis shoes, the actual like real cleats, even right. though they were rubber at first before you could graduate to spikes. Yep. Metal spikes were a big deal when you first got yeah. your, oh, yeah. your clothes. Walking on the, on the concrete and the, the clickety clack of the metal spikes and yeah. the full uniform and how you wore your stirrups and learning how to wear your uniform properly. Yeah, all those things are all vivid memories. And then hanging out at the ballpark all day, you're right. I mean, yeah. there would be uh, games all day long. Maybe you had an early game and then you waited around for your brother to play a game. Right. We did vent games. And I know you, I mentioned this before and I know you, you related to it. We used to play cup ball. Yes. Yes, that's what we called it, too. You'd wad up like the old Coke cup, right? Yeah, the old Coke or Pepsi cups, you'd wad them up, and they, they were waxed, and you can make them pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. and get a popcorn box and put it on your hand and use that for the bat. Yeah. And, and, and uh, unless you had a wiffle ball bat or something you could use. But, yeah, we'd use the popcorn box on our hand. Yeah. And then we'd, we'd pitch. We'd throw that cup ball pretty hard, too. Right. And and hit it, and it was, you know, that pole's first base, that pole's second base, right. that trash can's third base, and – uh you know, we play cup ball, well, you know, right. all day long. Yeah, we did it too. And I remember we played between two of the fields, the Bronco and the Pony field. And there were the two outfield fences. And sometimes you'd get a hold of one and you'd knock it over the fence. And you had to look around and make sure nobody was watching because you're not allowed to be on the field. They'd, somebody would start yelling at you. So you'd like, Who, who's doing it? Oh, Kevin, Kevin Cook, you, you got to go. You hit it. You got to go get it. He'd have to like hop over the fence, grab it real quick, hop back over before anybody screamed at him and then yeah. game on again. Yep, that's exactly right. Same same experience. You know, the other thing, too, uh, that I remember is, again, probably Joan Cohn did this. She was probably a team mom. My mom was, too, is you wait till after the game. As much as we love playing it, you wait for that whatever they gave you, a quarter, probably, maybe 50 cents, and you'd go to the snack shack. And, man, I remember getting, you know, Abba Zabba's, Zots. Uh, we called them pepper bellies. It was basically Fritos with chili and cheese on top. What, what do you remember about the snack shack? Hot tamales. The hot tamales. Oh, yeah. Crushed some hot tamales and the soft serve ice cream. Yeah. We could swirl chocolate and vanilla together and get it just right and design it all the way up the ice cream cone. So the soft serve ice cream and the hot tamales definitely were a, a go-to items. Oh, good. So I did want to ask you something about something you mentioned earlier. How did you end up being a right-hand pitcher but a left-handed batter? And you also golf left-handed, right? How did that happen? That was my dad. My dad uh, actually wanted to name me after Ted Williams. And he was a huge Ted Williams fan. And he taught me how to bat left-handed from an early age. He forced me around to bat lefty. And uh, even though I was a natural righty, I threw right-handed. He didn't mess with that. But he definitely wanted me to be a left-handed batter. And it just carried through all the way. And when I picked up golf, uh, I tried to learn right-handed at first, and the eye-hand coordination just didn't sync up at all. I just felt yeah. more comfortable standing from a, from a left-handed side. And, you know, it was strictly uh, because my dad wanted me to be the next Ted Williams, and my mom switched it out. When I, the night I was born in the hospital, my mom went to the – made my name David when dad left the hospital. <laughs> and I showed up the next day and he said, what happened to, to, the I was to be Theodore after Ted Williams? <laughs> he, goes in, he goes to the nursery to look for you. I, Theodore Cohn, I'm his father. Yeah, there's no baby here named Theodore Cohn. 
Joan Cohn switched, or switched it on him that night when he left. And uh, he wasn't happy. I'll tell you that. He was not yeah. a happy camper for a while. Wow. She called a late audible. So we got to wrap this up. But I want to ask you two more things. When I grew up, I'd always ask friends if they wanted to play catch. But as you know, Field of Dreams, hey, Dad, you want to have a catch. What did you call it? Play catch. Yeah. Or play catch. Yeah, I never, never heard have a catch until Field of Dreams, probably. Yeah, right. I think you're right. I never really heard that experience, that expression uh, until that movie. And then the other thing, again, we used to be able to get by with two mitts and a ball, right? So you and I could be playing catch. A buddy joins in. He gets in the middle doing rundowns. We used to call that playing pickle. What did you call it? Called a hot box. Oh, okay. Hot box, yes. You know, the rundown, the rundown play. Yes. You yeah. had some fun with that. Oh, my God. Yeah, we do it in our front yard. We could do it for hours. You had to be what careful. Did you ever play? Go ahead. Every now and then, you drill the guy in the back in the rundown. You had to be careful. <laughs> but, but you didn't mean to, right? Yeah, I didn't mean to. Right? <laughs> hey, the other game we used to play a lot, I don't know if you ever did, it was Three Flies Up. Did you play that one at all? Or Over the Line? Did you ever play those games? So I'll just give you Three Flies Up was one guy would, you'd hit as if you were hitting like fungos. Yes. Except three or four buddies playing outfield. But yeah. you don't have to battle for the ball. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like the home run derby now. You see all the kids chasing the home run. The oh, yeah. The yeah. ball in the outfield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we play that. Or if we didn't have it, nobody could hit a fungo when you're really young. Nobody yeah. Hit it, so we just, we just chuck it. As right. Far as, yeah, with, you know, with our hand. We'd throw it up as high as we could, and the guys would try to we'd throw each other fly balls. Yeah, love it. Good times. All right. Great taking a trip down memory lane with you. Want to remind anybody watching these, that it's me and David or anybody else, with Yes Network, that you can go to Twitter, at Yes Network, and then tweet us with questions that you might have for me, David, or anybody else, and you can hashtag it Yes Mailbag. So you ready to dig into the mailbag at some point in the future, David? Yes, bring it on. Any questions, we'll take them all. Just remember, you can find them at Conal Stick Park or Conway Field, right? That's it, that's it exactly. All right, good to see you, Coney. We'll talk to you soon. You too, Bobby. Take care.